Hello everyone, I'm back. My name is Mauro Hernandez and today what I want to show you is how to use a Zoom PMI and PMI stand for Personal Meeting ID. Oftentimes when we create new meetings uh, we just sort of create new meeting IDs and then those have uh, unique links to them and so every class we create will have a different meeting ID and a different link to it. But if we use the uh, ID that's um, associated with our account, our PMI, then we'll have the same meeting ID and the same link. So we can just always have the same way to reach our online class. And this is useful for a couple of uh, reasons. Uh, it might uh, lessen the confusion students have. So you don't have to keep creating new links and the students have to follow new links. It'll just be the same one that they follow every time they want to join your class. And uh, that way if they have to join late or you don't have to scramble to get them the link, uh, maybe you forgot to or you sent them the wrong one, uh, you know, you had it copied and pasted from the earlier class and then you send it again, that cuts down on all that confusion. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't have some uh, detractions, but we'll address those issues a little later. So. How do we start using our PMI? Well, normally when you want to create a new meeting, you would click this orange button. And we'll still do that, but after we change a couple of settings. Down here under New Meeting, you'll see this little drop-down menu carrot. And if you click it, you'll have a couple of options, right? Start with video, which is probably good. And then use my personal meeting ID or your PMI. Mine is checked on, but obviously you can, yours will probably be checked off if you're not using this currently. But you'll want to turn it on and then below it you'll see this number. And this is your PMI, this is your personal meeting ID. And like I said, that will just be the same meeting ID and the same link, right? Your ID and your, your invitation will always be to the exact same address. And they can just follow it every time they want to join your class. Now you might say to yourself, well, what if I have students that, you know, are supposed to be in the afternoon and I don't want them joining my morning class? Or what if they try to join classes at weird times of the day, uh, which I have had in the past? Uh, well, then that's when you will change your PMI settings to, so, to sort of uh, adjust when students can and can't enter your room. And we do that through, uh, under advanced options, enabled waiting room. And so when you have uh, uh, your waiting room enabled, even if a student tries to join your class, uh, they'll be put in that waiting room and they'll have to wait for you to put them inside your class. Sometimes I start my Zoom classes a little early and I'll just be fidgeting around with um, you know, options and settings and stuff that I'm going to prepare. Uh, and the students will try to join, but again, they can't actually enter their class. They can't see me through my webcam because they'll be in that waiting room. And there's a couple of options, uh, other options. You can uh, change your ID if you're not happy with the one Zoom assigned to you. You can require a password uh, so that you can make sure that only your students or the students who have that password can enter your class. Uh, and a couple of other options. This enable join before host, that one might be checked on. If I can remember correctly, mine was checked on before I checked it off. You probably want to check that off. You probably don't want students in your class before you're there. Uh, but again, you never know. You might have some reason for that. Uh, you, you know, maybe students can discuss things before you enter the class. And so maybe you're cool with that. Uh, and the rest of them, you know, mute participants so that they can be muted once they enter your class. Authenticated users mean that the students have to have their own Zoom accounts and Zoom IDs. I don't use it and then automatically record meetings. I'll even show you right now uh, the way to record a meeting once it's began so that you can make sure you're like ready to record uh, before you start recording. So we're gonna go ahead and save those options and we're gonna start our new meeting. And you're gonna see that up here, right, where you have your information, you'll see Mauro Hernandez's personal meeting room with my personal meeting ID and this link https colon forward slash forward slash scc1 dot zoom dot us slash j slash nine four six five two six three eight three three is the same meeting id the same link 
always. Right? The students only need to copy it down once, or you, maybe you can share it over and over again, but at least you know that you're not sharing a different link. It'll really cut down on that confusion. And again, it doesn't, it doesn't cut down on um, any sort of security you might have. As you can see here, we have our ability to lock the meeting, which means that once it's locked, no one can enter. We can disable the waiting room. Maybe once you're in your class, you don't really mind too much. If a student comes in late, you don't want to be trying to you know, let them enter while the, the meeting's going on. So you can disable the waiting room. Um, if we go to more, you can, like I said, once you're ready to record, then you can start recording. You can pause the recording. You can stop the recording or just end your meeting and then the recording will be over. If we go to our participants, we have more options. We have again that new participants upon entry. Sometimes I usually have this checked off and then once my class officially begins, like, you know, we might have a bit of morning banter, but after that's over, then um, I'll, un I'll make sure to mute them just in case someone comes in during the class and I don't want their microphone to be on, maybe cause an interruption. And like I, or you can play enter exit chimes so you can know when people enter, when people leave, uh, those different uh, options. But anyways, that's just basically how you uh, would use your PMI to create a consistent reoccurring Zoom link that your students only need to sort of follow uh, every time they want to join your class. And, uh, you know, if you have any more questions or you want, uh, if there's any more other topics you want to discuss, I know... I'm still working on a video about breakout rooms. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, you know just email me or email your supervisor and they'll get uh, contact me or maybe leave a comment on the, the video. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful to you and uh, you know hopefully you get your guys' uh, classes started off on the right foot. So uh, have a good school year and uh, just let me know if you need any help. Okay. Good luck, guys, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.